Good morning. <coughs> welcome to worship. A warm welcome also to those of you who are joining us online. We're glad that you could be with us today. Uh, it, during the season of Epiphany, Jesus reveals himself as our Savior. He reveals himself as the light of the world. And, and one of the ways that we see him do that this season is through his mighty and many miracles. We saw last week he turned water into wine. And today we see Jesus give sight to a blind man. You know, he's done the same thing to all of you, though, too. He's opened up your eyes of faith. Though you were born spiritually blind, though you couldn't see a thing, couldn't see a way out of the problem against death, a way out against the problem of guilt, Jesus opened your eyes and he revealed himself to you. It's that truth that we celebrate here today. May God bless our worship. We'll begin with our opening hymn, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the and glory the of the Lord, Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, 
that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you. <coughs> Hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, Christ have mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return. Hear our <coughs> prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord of life, live in us that we may live for you. Amen. 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 In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Bind up the brokenhearted and proclaim liberty to the captive. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson of God's word this morning is taken from Isaiah chapter 61, beginning with the first verse. Here the prophet Isaiah foresaw the work that Jesus would do. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor, they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities they have been devastated for generations. Aliens will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and vineyards. And you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations. And in their riches you will boast. This is God's word. We join in our hymn response, O Jesus, King of Glory. Oh, 
Jesus is met with some hostility. The apostles experienced that firsthand, but, but God blessed them in their witnessing to that light, testifying to Jesus' glory. And, and they asked God for the uh, courage and, and to uh, speak boldly about it um, and the opportunities to do so. This is our prayer, too, that God would give us plenty of opportunities to share the news of salvation and, and point others to him. A lesson from Acts chapter 4. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. This is God's word. We join in reciting together our verse of the day, Matthew 4, verse 23. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching, preaching, and healing every disease. Alleluia. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. <coughs> Our holy gospel for this Sunday is taken from John chapter 9, beginning with the first verse. This will serve as the basis of our sermon. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents, that he was born blind. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spit on the ground made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means scent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated, and I invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Good morning, you guys. Good morning. Good morning. This is a good day, isn't it? <coughs> it's a very good day. Did you hear the story that I just read about Jesus? Yes. What, what did he do? <laughs> <laughs> what did Jesus do? He, he says, it says that he came across a man who was blind. What's that mean if someone's blind? They can't see. They couldn't see. This guy, he, he never saw anything. He never saw the color purple. He never saw what a dog looked like. He never saw what his parents looked like. He couldn't see anything. And now he's, he's grown up. He's a, he's a man like me. And he still hasn't seen anything. But, but Jesus does something. 
What? He does something kind of weird, doesn't he? Never saw the mud. Mud. Do you know where he got the mud? No. He spit on the ground and he mixed his spit with the mud and he he puts it onto the guy's eye. And then he says, Go. I won't do that to your puppy. (laughs) Then he says, Go wash it off. And the guy washes it off. All of a sudden, he opens his eyes and he can see. He could see everything. He could see the crowds of people. He could see the birds up in the air. He could see it all because Jesus healed him. But you know what was even better was that Jesus didn't just give him the gift of sight that day. He gave him the gift of faith. He gave him the gift of faith. And Jesus has done that to you and to me too. He's given us the gift of faith. But Jesus, he, he didn't put mud on your eyes. He didn't do that to you, did he? But he washed you with something. What did he wash you with? Water. Water. What kind of water? The water of your your baptism. The water of your baptism. That washed all your sins away. That washed all my sins away. And now we can see. We see Jesus as our Savior. We see Jesus as the one who's forgiven us all of our sins, who's paid for our sins. We see Jesus as the one who's going to take us to be with him again. We can see now, can't we? Let's, I like the news. Let's hold our hands and let's thank God for washing us and allowing us to see, okay? Dear God, thank you for sending me Jesus to open up my eyes of faith so that way I can see you as my Savior and, and see that you're directing me to heaven and taking me to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Nice work, guys. You can go sit back down with your parents, okay? And we'll continue with... There you go. We'll continue with our hymn of the day, O God from God, O Light from Light.
Yeah. <coughs> Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance through Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Amen. The words for our meditation this morning are taken from John's Gospel, chapter 9. Please bow your heads and join me for prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, I can't imagine it. I can't even imagine what it would have been like to live a day in his sandals. In our lesson, Jesus comes across a man who had been blind from birth. can't imagine that. You know, in that day, in that age, blindness was a sentence of poverty, of loneliness, of helplessness. This man relied on the meager income of his parents and the, the spare shekels people might throw him on the street in order to buy food, to eat, to survive. And that act of begging, it wouldn't have been easy because that those corners were riddled with other sick souls who had life stories as tragic as his. Other people who too had been blind from birth, lame from birth, deaf from birth. Other people who too had been crippled in some accident. Children who had lost their parents living out on the streets. All these people were competing, if you will, for the generous hearts of others. The sheer numbers of beggars must have made a change in people's hearts. I mean, some became cold and callous. Uh, others felt helpless. Either way, many people just kept their heads up and their eyes straight, tried to ignore the, the hands grasping up from the ground, the pleas for help. Imagine how difficult that would be to feel so helpless, to feel so worthless feels like, like being a, a burden on society. Imagine, too, what, what it must have felt like for him, though, to never have been able to see the, the smiles of his friends who had tried to cheer him up when he was feeling down and depressed. Imagine not ever being able to see the smile of his mother, who had been so warm and gentle. Imagine that he'd never been able to see the hands of his father, Hands which had held him as a boy. Hands which had protected him as he grew older. Hands which led him day after day. Imagine that. Talk about a rough life, huh? What did I do, God? What did I do to deserve this? I don't think it's that difficult for us to hear that cry of depression, that groan for some answers. What did I do that I deserved this in my life? How, how could I have been that horrible that you'd lead me to this pitiful, pathetic life on the street? It isn't difficult for us to imagine him thinking that because that's what, is this, what Jesus' disciples were thinking. Teacher, rabbi. Who sinned, this man or his mother? Who sinned that he, he should be cursed with such a pitiful existence? You ever feel that way? When tragedy or pain hits your home, hits your heart? You ever wonder, has God removed his love? Patience, the light of his grace from us? Is God punishing me because I'm, I'm such a horrible sinner? 
while it's true that sometimes we do suffer the consequences for our sinful actions, is that always the case? Whenever some hurt, some pain comes into our life, God's paying me back. Absolutely not. Because the Son of God says so. Jesus said to his disciples, this wasn't karma coming back around and getting this man back for some horrible sin. Neither this man nor his parents sinned. Well then, why, Jesus? Tell us. Why? Why such tragedy? Why such catastrophe? Why such pain, such hurt, such sorrow? Why? This is a key verse in our lesson before us today. This happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. This happened so that God's glory might be revealed. This happened so that people would see and know the mercy and the love and the grace of God. That's an awfully comforting thought, especially when trial and tribulation come into our life. When the, when the boss hands us a pink slip. When, when the doctor says to you that it's cancer. When we lose our mother. Why is this happening, God? What does God do with those tragic things, those painful experiences in our lives? Well, according to his son, sometimes these things happen so that the work of God might be displayed, so that others might see his mercy, his patience, his power. This man, born blind, certainly had gone through some tough, tough years. Life had not been easy. But Jesus says, you know what, today, today you are going to know, you are going to experience my power. You're going to experience heaven's glory and it's going to shine through you. Because what I'm about to do, people are going to know that I am the light of the world, the light of salvation. Jesus then spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. Can you picture him? You know, clinching to that promise, that command from that voice calling to him in the darkness. He gets up from his spot on the corner and he makes his way to that public pool. His, his knees are shaking. He's got butterflies in his stomach. He's, he's got some anticipation, but some nervous tension. Is this really going to work? Is this, is this really going to happen? He collapses to his knees and dips his hands, cupping that cool water. And he brings it up to his face and he washes. And then, then he holds his breath. He opens his eyes. For the first time, those eyes were functioning as God intended them to. He looks down, he sees light, light, bouncing off the water of the pool. He looks up and he sees birds. Birds just soaring through the clouds in the sky. He looks all around me. He sees people, crowds of people, their faces, their features, crowds of people, things he'd only ever heard before. Now he could see. I would bet that those packs of mud were immediately replaced by tears of joy. I can see. I can see. I don't think we can even imagine what that experience must have been like for that man. Jesus says to his disciples, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Boys, you want to see that I have the power to turn the lights on? Just watch this. 
You want to see that you can put your faith, your trust in me? Well, step back and check this out. But you know what? The even greater miracle that happened that day wasn't, wasn't this. Later on, Jesus sought that man out again. And he said, do you believe in me? And the man said, yes, Lord. And he bowed down and worshipped him. Though this man had been born both physically and spiritually blind, Jesus had opened up his eyes, opened up his heart to see him as he truly is. Not as some great prophet, but as the Son of Man, the Savior of the world. This man who was once lost was now found. This man who was once blind now could see. He saw his salvation. He saw his Savior face to face, both with his eyes and with his faith. Brothers and sisters, you, you see that God's done the same thing for you too, right? We were born spiritually blind. We couldn't see our salvation. We, we couldn't see Jesus. We were born ignorant and blind, not knowing what to do with problems like pain, guilt, death. And sure, you know, there are many people, many so-called self-proclaimed experts who tried to offer up all sorts of explanations. Well, you know, what do you do with pain? Well, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. What about guilt? Don't worry about it. Just do what makes you happy. What about death? That's just a part of life. But I think you can hear that those are just the ramblings of blind men. Because they can't see. They can't see the big picture. They can't see what it's all about. But you can. And you do. You can see that your Savior is always with you. You can see the plan He has laid out for you. You can see where He's taking you. You can see that He will never leave you. You can see. By God's grace, he's unstuffed your ears, which were, which were clogged with sin. And he's allowed you to hear the good news of the gospel. He's allowed you to hear that news of your Savior's love and mercy. In his great mercy, in his infinite mercy, God has uncovered your eyes, which were blinded by guilt. And he's allowed you to see his cross, his empty tomb, the assurance of your resurrection. You can see. So then why, why at times do we put the blindfold back on? Why at times do we look at our pain as a punishment from God? Why at times do we look at our worship on Sunday mornings as another wrench in our weekend plans? Why do we at times look at our, our acts of Christian service as this, this burden, this, this horrible, heavy obligation? Because that old self doesn't stop, does it? The devil never ceases to try and cover up our eyes from seeing the glorious, beaming truths of Scripture, the wonderful news of God's love. But brothers and sisters, God has opened your eyes, not with packs of mud, but with the waters of your baptism. He's washed you and given you that gift of sight, and you, you can see. Jesus did exactly what he said he was going to do that day. He said that the work of God would be displayed in this man's life, and boy, was it ever. The disciples faith was strengthened as a result of seeing it. This man, what did he do? He had the opportunity to share with his community, with his friends, his family, the gift he'd been given. Not just the gift of sight, but the gift of faith. The gift of being able to see his Savior. We chime in with the disciples. We cannot help but speak about the things we have seen and heard. With our eyes opened, how can we go back to the darkness? 
in good times and in bad and sickness and in health, the way you live your life of faith, it's an opportunity for God to display his glory in you. An opportunity to let your light shine so that other people may see the light of the world, Jesus Christ, your Savior and theirs. It's an opportunity to share with people the reason for the hope that you have to look confidently in his cross and point others there too. We all have a story, a story like this. Whether it happened when you were a few days old and your parents brought you up to the font, or whether it happened when you turned 40, either way, you've been given the gift of sight, the gift of faith. Live in that light. Let the light of his word guide you. Share that light with others. May God bless us with that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 10 in our worship folder. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. This time, please take a moment to fill out the friendship registers that are going to be uh, distributed by our ushers. Also, those of you who are joining us online, please be sure to sign our online guest book. We really appreciate that. Uh, after that, we have the opportunity to bring our offerings of thanks to the Lord. stand for prayer. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, Lord of glory, you delight in making yourself known to us and others. 
bring us to recognize and rejoice in your majesty and your ministry. In love, you chose to exercise your greatest strength to serve us in our greatest need. You revealed the brightness of your glory through humble deeds of love. You called ordinary men to do extraordinary things as your disciples. You call us also confidently to follow you, diligently to learn from you, and lovingly to imitate you. Equip and empower us to serve you and our neighbor faithfully. Use us as your witnesses to bring many throughout the world to the light of your gospel. You revealed your glory through mighty signs and wonders. Assure us that you still rule all things in the universe and use them to serve our eternal good. In wise compassion, you often exercise your power to help and heal people with physical and emotional needs. Give us courage and compassion to relieve the distress of the hurting, to pray for all according to their needs, and to be content and cheerful when in your wisdom you ask us to endure hardship. Heavenly Father, Holy Physician, we offer a, a prayer of thanks to you uh, as you have uh, guided a friend of Kathy Allers, Debbie, uh, through her surgery. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that the, uh, the, for the work of the doctors and nurses who, who got all of her cancer. We ask that you would uh, uh, continue to bless Debbie's recovery and, and watch over her as she regains her strength. Uh, continue, Lord, to uh, uh, hold before her eyes the, the, uh, the best cure you've given, the, the cure from sin, uh, through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May that continue to give her hope and healing in the days to come. Hear us, Lord, also as we bring you our private petitions in silent prayer. Preserve your truth among us, and by that truth preserve us until you appear in dazzling splendor to bring us to the glory of heaven. Let our anticipation of the heavenly kingdom ennoble our thinking and speaking, enrich our conduct, and increase our joy in all aspects of earthly life. Hear us, Lord. In your name we also pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who came as the light of the world so that the world may have light and life through him. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Holy, 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 sing to the heavenly armies, sing for his glory. Thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. be seated and come forward at the direction of our ushers. Take an eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you until life everlasting. Depart in peace, your sins are forgiven. body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins, shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Take a drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Jesus Christ, Amen. given into death for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take the cross of the true body of the cross of Jesus Christ, given into death for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Amen. shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. for you, for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven.
this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Given it to death for you. this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. of all of your sins. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for you for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Stand for the Song of Simeon. light of the world continue to burn brightly for our eyes of faith to see the forgiveness we have through your sacrifice and the home in heaven that you have won for us holy spirit continue to let our faith shine in everything we say and do so that others may come to know the love and the forgiveness that is theirs through faith in jesus we ask all this in our savior's name amen, amen. the lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
You may be seated for our closing hymn. Today is the deadline. If you plan on going to the Hurricanes game uh, with Gethsemane, uh, today is the deadline to, to uh, email Scott Gibson and give him a call. Uh, you should have his email in that email that I sent you. So if you're interested in, in uh, getting some tickets, make sure you do that today. This is the last day. Um, also, not in the bulletin, um, on February 15th, uh, our youth group is going to be hosting a parents' night out. So you drop your kids off and here at church. Uh, what, what time did you say it was? Uh, like 530 to 830. 5.30 to 8.30. Drop your kids off. Go have a nice Valentine's Day or post-Valentine's Day dinner on a Friday night. Uh, go grab some food and leave your kids here. Um, and you got free babysitters there for the night. So uh, if you'd like to do that, just to make sure you're aware of that, that that's an option out there. So thank you to our youth group for volunteering to do that. We appreciate that. Um, also, earlier this week you uh, received an email from me, uh, and for those of you who maybe don't check your email, um, I received a call this week uh, to serve as a professor at Luther Prep School in Watertown, Wisconsin. Um, LPS is uh, where we get probably almost half of the pastors in our synod, they go to this school. Um, <coughs> the, uh, the call is to, to teach um, either uh, sophomore or junior religion. Um, so that would be either Old Testament prophets or the Gospels for one, or it would be uh, the New Testament, um, Acts, and then the Epistles. Uh, the English part of it um, is sophomore English probably, um, which would be some grammar review, um, some uh, literature like Julius Caesar, um, uh, some creative writing. Um, the uh, coaching aspect would be uh, football, somewhere on the football program, and then some other sport later on in the year that, uh, um, that would be worked out later on. Um, for those of you who don't know how a call process works, um, we don't uh, um, submit our resumes anywhere. Um, uh, it's not as if I uh, raised my hand and said, help get me out of Cary, please. Uh, I'm dying here. Nothing like that. Um, for our synodical schools, what they do is uh, they, they invite the called workers to submit nominations. Um, and so somebody submitted my name, and then from that list of nominees, uh, the governing board of the school uh, looked at each candidate, and, and I was called. Um, so this doesn't mean that I'm 
leaving. It doesn't mean I'm staying. It's, it's, it's a time to decide. Usually, uh, I've never had one of these before, but I'm told they take about three to six weeks is usually what you shoot for. Um, so hopefully within a month or so, um, I, I'll know uh, where I can best serve. Um, the, the neat thing about this is there are no bad choices. Uh, it's a choice between two good paths to take. Um, and so for the next couple of weeks, uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of praying um, and a lot of uh, talking with people I've served in the ministry with, people that, uh, have, the guys my classmates, uh, people up at LPS, and especially I want to hear from you. Um, so uh, please, if you would like to set up a time to get together and, and share your thoughts with me, uh, I would love to do that. Um, I, I would love to, to hear what you think about where I can best serve God and his kingdom, because that's really what this is all about um, and, and so one please keep me in your prayers and, and two let me know what you think but also why don't just say we want you to go um, or <laughs> we want you to stay you got to tell me why okay uh, so th that would be very helpful in, in my deliberation um, and if you have any questions about the call or whatever or, uh, the call process please let me know I, I'd love to talk about it and, uh, but uh, you know, give him the call right before lunch is about to start. You know, you couldn't have timed it any better. But anyway, I wish you God's blessings this week. And, and like I said, if you'd like to set up a time to talk, um, that would be great. I'd appreciate that. Have a great week, and uh, we'll see you this week, later on this week, if not before. Thank you. One second.